Hail and well met. I think that's what we say here. But this is a hangout. Exactly. Indeedly do. Ah, uh, it's been a little while since we've done this. Yeah. Sporting new hair. I am, yeah. I got a haircut, you know. I also got a little sunburn right here. Went on a little how, trip to California. You on only half of your forehead or You know, that's a good question. <laughs> like for some reason the sun really likes this patch here and then this other patch is like extra resistant to the sun i'm only like half fire resistant i i had a, a sunburn that was like a, a really fancy like um, torque or something because um i had an open neckline and then i had a big pendant and so the sunburn was this neckline area but with this circle it was unburned because the pendant had uh, covered it so it looked like really really fancy except for the fact that it was you know burned and very painful <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh it doesn't hurt it just i don't know it shows up clearly at least to me I'll, i just won't i just won't bother with it <laughs> i, I genuinely like didn't shadow. realize that was a i thought it was a shadow until you're like look at my sunburn <laughs> yeah well, yep. and I'll get some like killer farmer's tan coming up here soon. I'm still pasty white, but oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, remind me if I see you all within the next week or so. Remind me to show you my amazing leg tan. <laughs> I'm only tan from the knee to the shin, but it is like night and day. I'm like a panda. <laughs> I've got really pasty vampire skin. Yeah, so uh, how was your week, Rhiannon? What did you do? Let's see, what did I do this week? I picked a buttload of strawberries um, because they came into season. They're a little expensive, but uh, they are worth it because they are tasty um, and covered in nutritious dirt. <laughs> That's Ooh, what yum, you yum. Don't get from the uh, grocery stores. I mean, obviously I wash them, but somehow some always escapes. <laughs> <laughs> what are they like, the smaller strawberries? No, they, um, so my like platonic ideal of you pick strawberries is a place that it's closed probably a decade ago now that was by my parents' house that I went to as a kid. And they had little strawberries that were therefore more of a pain to pick, but they didn't travel as well. Um, so they'd like pick a few and sell them at the roadside really nearby. Um, or you could you pick them and they were so sweet and so like flavorful. Mm -hmm. Um, and the place that I found up here in Seattle. Um, I probably could shop around a little bit more, but they tend to do like bigger strawberries that would make the transition to a grocery store okay. Um, but they're still better because they are ripened in the field as opposed to um, with what ethylene gas or whatever in a warehouse somewhere. Um, but I still, in my heart, I think of those those uh, little baby guys. Uh, we have a bunch of viewers saying hello to us. So uh, Decker Kane, Scott S.J. Magner, um, got Elias Buck out there. We've got Seldarine, Shay, and Menegroth. Hello, everyone. It's been a little while. Welcome back. I wore a, a strange, well, not a strange, a funny shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does that say sorry? Hi. Yes. Well, no, no, no. It says sorry. Sorry. Love it. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm I'm a dual citizen, so I can make uh, Canadian jokes. Oh, you're dual? Oh, that's awesome. I am, um, because my uh, mother was, and so Canada lets you um, become a citizen, but if I was to have kids um, and we weren't living there or my partner wasn't Canadian, then they, my kids couldn't be Canadian because their grandparent was, but I can't. So I sent in my box tops, and they sent me. <laughs> nice. Do you do you I get any uh, do you get any unique perks for being Canadian that Americans don't get? Like, have you ever traveled internationally and chosen your Canadian passport instead of your U.S. one to show? Well, so that's the thing is that um, you you get your citizenship, and then you have additional paperwork and or fees to get your. Um, social insurance number, which is the same as social security number, um, and then uh, the passport. Um, so I've never chosen to do those yet. Um, so I don't actually have a Canadian passport, just the citizenship. Mm. So I could like pay my money and get it, but I just haven't. I do have um, expedited border um, pass thing um, 
that I can use at uh, the land crossings. So if you're ever um, one of the land crossings into Canada, and there's like the lane that nobody's in, or there's one person in who shouldn't have been there, and then they're trying to get back in, and nobody will let them back in. <laughs> blocks that lane. Yeah, so okay. That's the nexus lane, and I can drive in that. Have you thought about like uh, when you might pull the trigger and just move to Canada and leave the U.S.? <laughs> and can we come with you? How many people can you bring? <laughs> Well, I'm single, so presumably I could marry someone. No. Can um, you marry like five of us? How many? What's the maximum <laughs> upper limit on marriage? <laughs> Is there one? I think Canada's so. the one person. I think yeah. Canada's just the one? Oh, okay. You can't just like have like a massive ceremony and marry like 20 of us all together in some some big Vegas <laughs> Elvis party and then take us all to Canada. There we go. Okay. This week I also uh, watched the finale. I'm late. It's been out a couple weeks, but I was traveling. Um, finale of uh, the courtship reality show, um, which I believe I talked about on the hangout before, uh, but it's the one where they uh, pretend that it's um, Regency time period. Only not really. Like half the dresses were completely wrong; they were just like poofy ball gowns. Um, and I was talking to somebody about the ending. They're like, "It was so artificial," and I'm like, "As opposed to the Bachelor or the Bachelorette, because right. <laughs> those are real natural and organic." Yeah, Especially the thing where you, they like trap you in the house, and there is no phones, no internet, no TV, no books, no magazines, no newspapers. Um, Basically, there's, like, literally nothing to do if you don't go on the dates. Um, I, I was reading about it at one point, and apparently um, people wore, like, a running track in the backyard because they were so desperate for something, anything. They were like, okay, there's no home gym or anything, but at least I can run laps. Um, so <laughs> the idea of being trapped in a house with people that you don't get along with and somebody that you're supposed to get along with but then you don't and cameras and then nothing to do but like interact with these people more in front of the cameras just is my version of hell and then also apparently you can't eat um, in front of the cameras on any of the dates because um, they can't deal with the mouth noises and the eating noises or whatever <laughs> yeah. with their mics oh. so on The Bachelor, Bachelorette or any of those no forks, huh? um, yeah, reality TV shows, you'll notice on the um, dates what they're filming, uh, as far as the conversation between the two people, is always happening when they can't touch the food or drinks in front of them. It's just like there on the table and they cannot touch it. So one presumes they get like snacks beforehand, but the idea is like, okay, after all this and being trapped in this house and people, hey, cameras everywhere, the blah, blah, blah. And then you get there and it's like, here's beautiful food because this is a real place. They're taking you out to this restaurant. You may not eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whenever I've been on sets, we usually have uh, something that's like display food, like food that's just there to look good. And then we have food that we can actually eat. Which is like usually like pizza or something much more uh, messy and junky but fulfilling. Yeah. Well, in these cases, like on the dates, they're actually taking them out to like a little taverna in Greece or whatever. So presumably, it is the real food of the place. They just aren't allowed to eat it at, in front of the cameras. Um, anyway, I thought I I thought the courtship was hilarious because um, she picked a guy and I kind of hated him because he was really smarmy. But he proposed, and uh, the thing ends, and I go to Twitter, and I'm like, um, courtship couple still together? And the answer is no. They made it a freaking month. And then he does <laughs> Oh, ouch. <laughs> so they didn't even, like, get into the honeymoon phase. Yikes. Like, they went back to real life from this artificial reality show sort of world. And then... They were like kind of visiting because they he lived in Manhattan, she lived in Seattle. They were like visiting each other's like family and places a little bit, um, and then he, apparently he was like, "This is never going to work." And he dumped her, um, which I think super sucks for her. But um, <laughs> wow! <laughs> but it was it was one of those.
those like sort of she she um with all the guys that she had sort of sent away at the end there was the like safe guy that they edited to be like super duper bland <laughs> okay and then there was mr smarm guy that she felt butterflies for okay um, so there was a consolation prize plus like the guy what would we call him like bad news or uh <laughs> Well, I don't know that he he seemed like he seemed like not an asshole. I will give him that. I just didn't like his smarmy edge. And he was clearly like he was not quite buying into the whole like we're going to fall in love and get married. Like he wasn't buying it into it as quite as much. And she's like, at the end of this, do you see us getting married? And he'd sort of like be like, well, she's like, oh, you, you you're not committed to me. And she'd get all upset about it. So he sort of like started being like, no, I'm totally in love with you. Um, but I think you could wow. sort of see that he was like, no, this is dumb. <laughs> We've just yeah. spent like what, six, eight weeks together in this weird set. And so how do we know if we want to get married? Yeah. Um, like how would we even know how we would actually get along outside in the real world under yeah. real world conditions? Yeah. But so, and the person I was talking to was like, oh, yeah, that other guy was super bland. And I'm like, well, I mean, I guess <laughs> maybe I just prefer bland guys. I don't prefer bland guys, but I prefer safe guys because, <laughs> like, it's easier to find something interesting about somebody, I think, than, like, try to make the asshole change. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. Admittedly, again, I don't think the other guy was an asshole, but. The tiger but always was, has stripes, etc. She et was totally in love, and she kept around forever. The guy who lived in a van, and he's Ooh. like, "I don't know if I can leave my van living lifestyle for you, baby." Oh my god, <laughs> he chose the van over her. He did. Yikes! No lie. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, who did you say she chose in the end? Or are we not revealing spoilers because we want people to watch this show for some reason? <laughs> I mean, I guess I could check the chat when 19 people, I think probably if they were going to watch it, they have. So, um, she yeah. Chose a guy okay, called... chat. You tell us whether you want the spoilers or not. <laughs> okay. Now I have to pause <laughs> and let people type. Oh, God, but, stop now. But, but I guess, like, um, was there a person that was eliminated that was, like, absolutely your surefire choice? I mean, so there was a guy in the beginning that I would have chosen for me. I don't know about for her, but definitely for me. But we she gotten... left her. I left him for you. Yes, she cut him. He's loose. He's free. Find don't him on Twitter him. and be like, just so you know, he lives in Vancouver, or at least he did at the time. Hey, the show oh was... yeah, there you go. Canada. So, um, but he only got two episodes, so you don't you don't really know anybody in that number of episodes. And there was a guy who I think would have been a great choice for her, who was um the there were three and he was cut at that point. So he made it like really, really late in the game. And he seemed interesting and funny. And, but she was just like, Oh, I don't get the same butterflies with you, which I guess you can't really sort of like argue with, but I mm. mean, I don't let butterflies choose <laughs> my like, entire life. So. I, I think that's wise. Like that's sort of what you learn <laughs> as you get older. Butterflies go away. Uh, how old were these people again? So she was she was early twenties. I want to say twenty three, but I don't know about the others. They they say it on the screen, but I don't like retain it. So I think they were mostly like late twenties. There was no like heinous age gap that they were. Okay. Um, so here I'll check the chat here. They mostly they all there's everybody wants spoilers. Okay. Nobody wants to actually watch the show <laughs> and figure it out. So the guy she chose, his name was um, Danny Batikia. But Patikio. They call him Danny B. Anyway, Danny um, B. Danny B. He was a real estate agent from um, Manhattan, and I think maybe also some of what I was reacting to was the sort of like um, more aggressive kind of New York personality on him. But the thing was that she was from Seattle, so I don't like if you're thinking that there's an East Coast West Coast kind of difference of like interaction, like she would be on my side but um it was interesting because um she's black and uh the last three guys um uh one of them was a 
uh, POC, but um, the other two were white guys. Um, so then there were a couple of um, different black guys at the beginning, but um, they got cut pretty early. There was one who was like an aspiring rap guy who was going to like do her personal rap. Wow. Or no, he was a singer. Anyway, um, impromptu singing, at least the way they edited it, um, is not actually that awesome when you don't have like the full like rom-com like backup band at least <laughs> in this case but i i enjoyed it um it i don't think i would watch a second season i mean online they were like oh the third guy to the the guy who caught got um cut you know second to last um he should have his own one and they should do this again, but I think they probably didn't oh, have God. the ratings to do it again. But um, I don't know that I would watch it again because I think fundamentally I don't like dating reality shows. But I felt like this was a dating reality show where I'm like, now I know what they're like, and I will never watch them again. And the like his historicity, not historical fact at all, made it palatable. <laughs> they wore pretty coats and cravats. <laughs> so so was it that this dude who lived in okay so first of all Meyer Doug makes a good point like yeah just because this dude lives in a van down by the river doesn't mean that he's poor you have to have at least forty five thousand dollars to start that lifestyle so <laughs> he had something he had something going on for him <laughs> I must admit I really love like trashy reality shows especially like the romance ones yeah. So, uh, I don't know, have you ever heard of, like, F-Boy Island on HBO? No. Oh, my God. So, you know, the title is uh, F-Boy Island, and everybody knows what F stands for, right? You know, it isn't fudge. But um, <laughs> basically what it is is, like, there's three bachelorettes, and then there's 20 guys. Ten of them are, like, self-professed F-Boys, and then ten of them are self-professed nice guys. And the ladies have to navigate... Um, and each pick a guy by the end of the show series. And if you pick an F-boy, the F-boy gets money. And then it's like up to them whether they pursue the romance or not. Oh, and man. if you pick a nice guy, I think the girl gets money. And then I think the girl gets to decide whether she wants to pursue the romance or not. One of the girls is terrible F-boy radar. Just the worst. <laughs> Yeah, there's always somebody. It is it is like cringe central to watch her, but it is also like just absolutely fascinating. Like you know, just seeing a, a train wreck uh, coming. Uh, one of them is just amazing though. Like she is like the Houdini of f boys. Like escape out of any trap, you know, that they lay for for her. Um, but the other part of it that I thought was funny that I liked about this one is like once the guys got booted off, they didn't just like go home. They actually got sent to a different part of the island. So, like, F-Boys got sent to, I believe it was called, like, F-Boy Purgatory, which was just, like, a pit of sand surrounded by, uh, like, log walls. And they were, like, gave, they were given, like, some leaves to make, like, a bed to sleep in and stuff. And then they were given, like, I don't know, like, Lunchables food, like, you know, terrible food. Um, whereas the nice guys got to go to, like, Nice Guy Heaven, which was, like, this really luxurious house like on top of a cliff and outside the main balcony they could see the f-boy pit and they got to see things such as like the f-boys in this sand pit building like a woman's boobs out of sand and then be like yo bro let me show you my technique i'm gonna get in on this you watch me and learn and then they like take turns like broing out of the sand pit with like this sand woman <laughs> it is just like it is just it is just the most like ridiculous thing I've ever seen and I like I have so many questions. I mean so that's people First of get all, yes, cast. you can watch it with me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean that is question number one. Um question number two, people are cast on this show and told you're an F boy, you're a nice guy. No, you you decide when you sign up, when you audition. <laughs> Oh, You're like, when you I'm audition, an F-boy you or I'm a nice self guy. identify mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as an F boy or a nice guy. Yeah. What if an what if a what if an F boy self identifies as a nice guy and the woman picks him as an F boy, but he's like, nah, I'm a nice guy. It's like mm, uh, they, buddy, they you're, get... a, you're an F boy. 
Yeah, they still get eliminated. They get to go to like nice guy heaven, which is sort of like the consolation prize, right? Uh, yeah. But the girls then know that there's less nice guys for them to pick from. So there's this less fascinating. Yeah. Like, so these are not their actual personalities necessarily. This is like the persona they're performing for the show. Well, I was going to say, I mean, they do script some of these. Yeah. So, especially when you get to the part where they're like doing the sand boobs. I'm like, no. that sounds like the kind of thing. 100%. Percent. Somebody That's the point where I might be like, question, oh. try it. There's... Question four, is this actually performance art? <laughs> it could very well be. I haven't actually hit the end of the whole series. I've only watched like maybe five episodes. Um, but yeah, you can watch it on HBO. <laughs> like some, some people, some viewers are asking where you can watch it. You can watch it on HBO. Uh, the producer is actually a professional comedian, like a stand-up comedian. So parts of the editing and stuff are definitely it, very like self-aware and funny. It sounds so much like one of the, like 30 Rock used to have like, fake shows that they were floating like milf island mm. and it sounds so much like one of those pitches where it's like totally this could never be a real thing yeah but it is but it is welcome to america peak capitalism yeah so like uh meta growth brings up that there's a therapy session scene i don't actually remember it sorry um but i do remember like another scene where one of the guys is like screaming at one of the girls like the girls like um blah 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 like you gotta go you gotta leave and the guy's like well whatever you don't know what's real you don't deserve me you don't deserve me and the girl's like whatever whatever and then the guy's like well you get rid of me but you don't deserve me and you don't deserve sean and we're all like who's sean and then the camera cuts over to this guy that we've never seen before and it goes boom sean Is that all the that's all the identification you get yeah and then everyone just talks about how sean is so nice but we just never see him everybody loves sean don't you know oh man oh yeah i remember guy just you know making up stuff for this particular session we're playing <laughs> Well, it sounds like a couple of our viewers have HBO and they say they could watch this if they want, but just be prepared for some really cringy stuff. Just warning you. I'm behind. I haven't watched um, Our Flag Means Death. I need to watch that on H HBO before I'm doing any cheesy uh, reality. Because I know it's good. <laughs> I just I'll always forget. Shay says, do any of us deserve Sean? No, none of us deserve Sean. Look into your heart, and you know, <laughs> you know it to be true. Um, yes, so we have a couple of giveaways today. Uh, I just want to insert that real quick. Number one is we're giving away uh, copies of Waypoint Kangaroo and Kangaroo 2 by the uh, incredibly talented Curtis Chen. So exclamation mark enter into chat to win. And these are going to be two hard copy, physical, co uh, two hard copy that we'll mail to you so it's us only and um you can request uh something to be signed in like he'll personalize it for you if you win uh we have one of those going on here and we also have one going on in our discord uh in addition you could do exclamation mark ticket for yet another chance to win another set of dice and a dice tray from phoenix dice i'm just helping out steven say that because he's setting up his new computer can you hear me? We can. Yes. Yeah, but okay, but in good. the zoom. But wait, no. Sorry, I thought you were in the zoom. You're not no. though. How exciting. Yeah. Whew, brand new computer and wow. Well, uh, nothing's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> yep. At least you're not muted. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, I, my tower of jigsaw we're still uh, on the, the camera yeah okay it 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 used to be a lot shorter if you recall from other episodes in this apartment but um they were all in the the closet but now the closet has actual like shelves and stuff in it because i bought shelves i can't <laughs> yeah. i found them success um so i put the shelves in and then 
I moved these and then I just put them on the shelves because that's how I roll. So I didn't actually buy that many jigsaws in the past couple weeks. <laughs> hey, I mean, I'm not judging. I love jigsaws. I'd be excited. Well, the the one I'm doing right now is going a bit slow. So my, my rate is, is falling behind. I got to pick back up again. It's one of those where it's a photograph, but when you zoom in on the photograph, it is nowhere near as like clear as you thought it would be. It's like uh, succulents. And let me tell you, a green succulent and a blue succulent at like thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, like scale, those colors are very similar. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I'm like, it'll be fine. Look, they're totally different colors. It'll be great, but it's taking a while. Okay, so 626 right now. Uh, we got to run the recap and then we'll see you all in a little bit. But it's good to be back, and uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a great episode. See you in a bit. So the Irregulars found the witches they were looking for, and, well, they didn't seem all that terrible, honestly. Or at least they seemed a lot more reasonable than the witches they were dealing with previously. But they took them back to their camp, did kind of make comments like, oh, we'll have to figure out what to do with you now, or things like that. But at the very least, offered information at least what they knew on Cecilia, at least from when she left the prison and came to them. That didn't end well, Cecilia left, and that's basically all they had. Now, the witches did want some help, and it seems one of their number had infiltrated the witches that uh, they'd been dealing with previously, the good Rashemi witches, uh, and had been captured, so would need a bit of a rescue. And the Irregulars seemed amenable to helping, at least. I mean, they are they are good, ostensibly. Don't quote me on that. But, well, the situation in the camp was only maybe half of really what went down. Because apparently, the devil that had marked Stong way back when he'd gotten out of prison, apparently an agent of theirs, wished to speak to Stong, as well as the other Irregulars. It doesn't exactly bode well, but they agreed to do the meeting, and each one of them found themselves in front of Glazia, Lord of the Sixth. Now, she was all honey-sweet words, preying upon their desires and their fears and insecurities, uh, you know, the way a good devil does. Uh, and each one was offered things, favors, trinkets that could help them, uh, assurances to remove herself from the life of uh, Shiny and Mirabelle, because apparently that's a thing. But in the end, she wanted something very particular. And what that was, well, she wanted them to go into the abyss and leave an artifact in a place that it shouldn't be. In exchange, she would give them uh, some knowledge on how the timeline split in the first place. If that wasn't to their taste. She could tell them where to find the Heart of the Piercing, who could potentially guide them to similar information or at least help them find out what spell this Golden Raven has been using. But in exchange for that, she wanted the Emerald Hourglass that the Golden Raven keeps. In the end, they agreed to do both. In exchange, not only would they get the information, but they would get, well, Shiny and Mirabelle freed. So Glazia took them to see the key that they would need to get into the abyss, and it was none other than Teenage Mirabelle from the Darkest Westgate. So, you know, I don't foresee that ending well, do you? 